Ooh, they about quit the whole show over that Anna judging situation. I don't, have we ever seen anything like this? Probably. What am I saying? It's not that absurd. I love Kato. I really do. Um, and I really understood her frustration because it's a pressure cooker. The stuff that they have to accomplish and do in such a short period of time, they don't really have access to the outside world, outside of the cast. You know, it's typical sequestering that they do so that nothing leaks. And one of the things that they challenge themselves with is just coming up with a new freaking design every single week. You know, it's not easy. Like you only have so much creativity. So I did understand her frustration, but I thought that it, they took it a little too far. You know, like I felt bad for Anna. As and I don't even really like Anna that much. I've been pretty outspoken about that, but I hope, I really hope that the judges aren't getting fed information from producers and like that's why they did it. I don't think they did. I really don't think it was intentional. I think they just were so disappointed with the rest of them that they picked something avant-garde, I guess. But it was, um, it was intense, right? I'm going to get into it. But before I do, I'm so sorry. This is so late. I genuinely am simply covering too many shows. I have never in my podcasting life, by the way, happy birthday to the pod. Uh, she has turned two, two years old uh, on July 8th. But anywho, I have never been hit with a workload where I'm like, wow, it's not like I could get this done faster. I physically can't get this done any faster because there are that many episodes that I'm covering. So I'm going to drop something off of She Speaks It All, which is my other podcast about everything non-Bravo that I watch, which is a lot because I watch far too much television. But um, I think I'm going to have to drop the Succession and Yellow Jackets rewatch completely because unfortunately, I can't keep up. Nothing will change to She Speaks Bravo scheduling because I would never. I would never. But I, okay, so that's why. That's why this is so late. I'm so sorry. But we're here now. That's all that matters, right? If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe and like the video and comment below. If I don't know you yet, introduce yourself. I love the YouTube community. If you're listening on a podcast, love you. Thank you. Appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please rate the show five stars. Give it a nice review. Really, really, really helps. But that's that. Let's let's go through this episode. This, this week, they were given the challenge of all of the designers had to work off of this single bolt of fabric. And the fabric was this like bright red stretch polyester. Bishmi is doing a blazer. And says, it's a big risk. And he used, he says these words, fusible, interfacing, knit-to-knit structure. Honey. Okay. I love Bishmi. I love him so much. During this walkthrough, Prajay is doing a suit. And Christian reminds him that Nina will eat his ass up if the fit isn't right. And that is facts. That is facts. Brittany is doing a combo of streetwear and activewear, and she's been doing activewear since her stroke. I mean, I couldn't believe when she said that. I absolute hypochondriac panic happened where I'm like, can I get a stroke? What's going to happen? So my Google history was in pure terror after seeing this because she had a clot in her brain. What? Huh. She was paralyzed on the right side of her body. I can't. I like, but she recovered, full recovery in six weeks using her Peloton. Now, now she's passionate about fitness and she even does some custom stuff for Peloton instructors. Instructors Is it Peloton? Peloton. Yeah. So good for her, man. I can't, That is a wild story. And she was on an airplane when it happened. Dude. 
Kato is doing some like basket weaving to create texture. And Christian comes over and is giving her his walkthrough shit, right? The typical stuff. And he is suggesting jewelry and styling ideas. And Kato is like, okay, honey, I got it. You could tell he's like, I don't want to deal. She's like, I don't want to talk to you about this. Christian goes, I believe in you. And Kato goes, me too. <laughs> She's not here for Christian. Kane is doing a dress for, quote, an everyday woman. And thank God Christian came around and was like, that is not the challenge. What do you do better than anyone? Evening. Be who you are. Bishmi's he's doing the, the faces in the design and Christian is loving it. And I love their dynamic. I really do. But then there's Anna, and she's literally creating the exact same ruffle thing we saw at the unconventional challenge. But I mean literally the exact same. So it was it was like she wanted to go home. And honestly, at this point, she should, because she's homesick for her baby. But that's that's for later. <laughs> Carson is super behind. Um, her sketch is even naked. Christian's like, get into the sewing room and do not come out until you have something. It is a one-day challenge. One. Fabio's doing his jumpsuit. And man, oh man, does Christian try his hardest to tell him this looks a little safe. And Fabio argues, which is kind of fair, that this is his style. And Christian, he's he's trying. He's trying every which direction. He's like, is there something more interesting you could do with the pant? And Fabio is going with his gut and not listening to Christian. He says, a jumpsuit that doesn't look like a jumpsuit is not boring. Well, unfortunately, that final design was pretty damn boring. Rami's is flowy and pretty, but Christian asks if this is the most impactful thing he could do. And you can, I love when you can see after Christian says something or Tim Gunn, whatever, you can see their brains like, huh, good point. So Rami shows him another sketch and Christian's like, go with this one. It's more innovative. And then they have a really cute back and forth about how Rami sews fast. And he's like, I really don't sew that fast. And Christian's like, you act like I don't know you. It was 16 years ago, though. Which Rami's fair to point out, like, that's not necessarily who I even am at all anymore. When the models come in, Hester has a major fit issue. They claim they have never worked with this fabric before, so there's this big learning curve. But isn't that like everyone? Everyone has the same fabric. Isn't that kind of the point of the challenge? You know? Like, everyone gets the same fabric. No one can say anything about it being unfair. You're all working with it. You know? But Hester... Hester's like, no, I, it's different for me. That's very them. Christian tells Fabio, once again, the front is safe. And Fabio has this look on his face like he's about to kill Christian. And he's like, I'm not changing anything. Anna's looks ridiculous. It's like a shift dress with the ruffles pinned to the top part. And Christian's like, what are you doing? Like, what is this exactly? And it, she knows she's going home. She's like, I know I basically just did this. It looks so absurd. It really does. It looks like two things that don't belong together. A shift dress with these like ruffles coming out of it. But I don't know about pattern making. I don't know about this shit. I don't really 100% know exactly what pattern making even is. But... I guess that's what they were so excited about is that it was taking this red and changing it up or something. I don't know. This is cute because Christian gets to take them shopping. They use it as a plug to promote um, the 2% cash back Wells Fargo card. But hey, that was, that was cool that they got to go shopping. Anna stays making her ruffle dress. And I was, I, of course, I'm acting like I'm the only one who noticed it was the same thing, but they saved all of the other clips from the designers being like that is the same damn dress she did for a little bit later in the episode and finally it's like Kane and Kato they're like didn't you she made this dress so they're like honey this you're gonna get in trouble Fabio looks around at one point and realizes 
I'm not the only one doing draping. <laughs> so now he's all worried. He's like draping because, again, I don't know the technique. And his stuff is sewn so perfectly. There's no denying that. But he is, that's his thing. His thing is this perfect draping. But kind of so is Rami's. But he's like, everyone else is doing it because it's an emergency. I'm doing it intentionally. And I was like, oh, Christian tried to warn you, honey. And I love Fabio so much. But, I mean, the red is hard. If you're, if Fabio doesn't really work like that in that kind of color. So he was like, I wonder how this would have looked not in red, not in one big red piece, you know? If it was one of his things that he could put different fabrics on and stuff and play with it more it might have you might have seen the dimension on it you know anyway I'll get into next day workroom in just a sec right now it's time for us to take a little break and I'll be back all right next day workroom it, it, again I have no idea how they do this I don't know how they put anything on the runway however suddenly when someone's like not prepared and doesn't have something done by the runway I'm like oh my god get it together like the thought of them doing it at first, I'm like, it's impossible. But then somehow I become like one of the bitchiest people, like the toughest judges. Well, they could do it. Why couldn't you? Like I get very, you know. So Hester's panicking because the fit is not right. Anna's model is helping her trim the ruffles. Now that's teamwork right there. Karasan is, is so fucking short. <laughs> this is my favorite. Is she adds a hem. But the hem is like barely an inch. <laughs> so it doesn't even do anything. But she was totally able to get that hem on there. Like she fucking did that shit, man. But it was it didn't make any difference. So instead of her having this big reveal moment, she, she scratches it. Like, no, because truly this her cooter is hanging out. Praje's model has her butt out too, but I think it's it ends up being covered with something. Runway time. Guest judge is Lena motherfucking Waith. Okay. Okay. Sick. Love. Love that Elaine is her friend. I love it. Obsessed. Obsessed. Britney's comes down that runway and I'm like, yes, bitch. Love it. And I couldn't tell exactly like why it looks so good. But when they eventually talk to her, I love that they point out like you did the white stitching. What do they call it? Over stitching or something? I wrote it down. Um, top stitching in the white. So it created dimension to the dress. And she was just like, I was worried that you guys were going to be like, this is a red challenge. But she did it perfectly. She didn't use any different fabric. She simply used a white knit because she thought, hey, this doesn't look good all one freaking color. So brilliant. It was it was cool. It was kind of strappy and sexy and then also hardcore, like rock and roll with the buttons in the front. Like, oh my God, she's talented. Praches is pretty, but kind of boring. I loved Coteau's. I loved Coteau's. I thought it was... Um, also a little, not safe, but just like a little simple. It was the basket weave jacket with the long flowy skirt. Beautifully fit though. Oh my God. Even the skirt, like it was just, it fit her like liquid. It looks so good. But then Fabio's drapey jumpsuit. It's not bad. Lena, I think liked it. I think that's the vibe Lena was giving off on the runway, but it was just like, I couldn't tell what it was supposed to be. You know, like I was looking at it like, Oh, I get what he was saying about it. it's not a jumpsuit, but it is a jumpsuit. But I'm like, but it does just look like a jumpsuit that you're putting, that you put more fabric over. You know what I mean? It wasn't quite where he wanted it to go, I think. Again, it was probably because it was all this one color, you know? Anna's comes down. And this happens to me all the time where I love a design and then they're like, or I hate a design and they're like, this is in the top. So I, my instinct was, what is this? To me, it didn't look creative. To me, it looked like she put a shift dress together and did exactly what she did in a couple challenges prior. So that's exactly what it was. It was absurd that this ended up in the top to me. Carson's is just short. So even though the model had the top part over it, I was still staring to see if I was going to get a cooter shot. So I got distracted and it wasn't until they, they brought 
Carissant out with her model and went through it that I was like, oh, wait, no, this is hot. But I was just so panicked about about it being that short. But it was, it was, it was cool. It was really cool. Hester's looks like festival wear. It looks like you would go to a club and rock, rock out in it. It's not bad. It's just what Hester's style is, you know? Laurence admits she's like so cheeky in her um, confessional. She's like, <laughs> she's like, I think I'm safe, but, uh, you know, it's not technically the hardest thing I've done. Meaning like this is a little bit of an easy route, a little safe route. She straight up admits it. I don't think Laurence really respects this, this uh, challenge or this season even. I think she thought she was just going to show up and make it to the, fi- the finale and present a line of clothes. But you got to get there, Laurence. You got to put some effort in. I respect it though, man. She's like, she's so damn cool about everything in real life too. If you missed it last week or the week before, I talked about um, how I actually worked with Laurent very briefly. She just needed a bartending job. And uh, the woman that was the GM and I was her AGM, Melina, shout out Melina, stunning, gorgeous woman. She actually was at the uh, Project Runway filming when Laurence was on originally. So if you go back and watch Laurence's season, you'll see Melina with the big, gorgeous, curly, blonde hair. Um... And Laurence is just this cool and down to earth. She's in no way mean. There's nothing mean about Laurence. She can come off that way, and I see why. But when you when you have her around you, she's warm, believe it or not. She's just super, like, boundaries up everywhere. And she's not moving them, you know? So you kind of respect it. As where me, I have no boundaries. And then I'm like, why did you violate my boundaries? You know, like, I don't have it down. Kane's is a beautiful gown, but I think I see skin peeking out where it's not supposed, like I couldn't quite tell what I was looking at, Um, but it's still beautiful. But here's the worst part. They flash to the judges and Brandon says to Nina, I don't even know what to think. And Nina says, I'll tell you what I think. It's alarming. Oh my god. It's like they're a bunch of a bunch of kids in a class all about to get in trouble. Ronnie's zipper dress comes out next and I was like, "Oh no." It just this woman it made her look it was just one of the most unflattering pieces of clothing. The way the zipper kind of pulls the fabric like it it it's not fluid, which is I think what he was going for, but he was like trying to be kind of edgy and add a different thing to it, but it wasn't executed right. Lena will say later, like the zipper isn't big enough. So like you can't even tell it's a zipper. It just looks like thick lining that's sort of taking the, oops, that's sort of taking the um, uh, silhouette to a place that maybe you don't really want it to go. Bishmi's is super cool with those faces. Super freaking cool. So, but anyway, they end the runway and Nina goes, guess you all turned into drapers and minimalists. And Fabio's face is like, are you fucking talking to me? That's my thing. Okay. I invented it. I'm just kidding. He's not thinking that, but he does get, he is pissed. And of course, everyone has like their head hung in shame. Like, oh shit, we're about to get chewed out. And I was, I thought it was a little fucking rude, <laughs> to Nina. These, like, they put these people through one day challenges. It's not like, it's not like they're given something like, here, take this design and change it. It's come up with the whole design using fabric you really would never use and do it in one day. Like, they're so not, e- they're never easy on these people. They're never like, wow, if everyone, it's kind of like it should be, um, like how if you take a test and everyone does bad, there's a learn it, there's a curve, grading curve. I feel like they should be like, wow, okay, this clearly was a little bit hard because we barely got any good looks out of it. You know, they it should be like on them. Okay. I'm a little annoyed. High score. Brittany. Loved it. Loved it. They loved the top stitching, like I said, and they loved the pants with the button front. And I love it. It's fabulous. Love. Low score. Rami. 
Brandon goes, what is indicative of you as a designer? And he's like, um, that's the thing that even when in Rami's first season, he always had this kind of, he, he, he seems to have like a very strong statement, but then when it comes down to executing it, he's like, what exactly is my statement? Like with the kite dress, you know, like this huge story behind the kite dress, but you're like, okay, but that isn't coming through here. You know what I mean? He's like a little too head in the clouds a bit. It doesn't flatter her body. It doesn't. Low score Hester. There's just too much going on. And Brandon goes, it looks like it wasn't working. So you took us to Paris in the 70s. <laughs> Work. That was exactly what it was. I was like, oh, that's it. <laughs> that's where we are. <laughs> Elaine gives them some credit and says it's more to do with the fabric than her talent. And in my opinion, this moment from Elaine was kind of proof that they are babying the newer contestants. It was like, it was like Elaine felt bad. It reminded me of when I was a manager. And as much as I hate to say this, of course, I had favorites. And you, excuse me, you connect, you kind of make relations with some of them and some of your staff. And when they do something not great. You add a little like, but you're also so wonderful. And like, you feel like you want to sugarcoat it. And that's how I felt Elaine was in this moment. Because Hester was like, I've never worked with this fabric. I've never worked with this fabric. This is my first time. And I'm like, everyone else was the same fabric. But because, because they said that over and over again, Elaine was like, you know what though? It wasn't you. It was the fabric. Okay. We're saying all these things, but it wasn't you. Okay. Now, mind you. Hester ends up going home, but still. Now for the big one. <laughs> they said, now for our next top score. And it was Anna's. <laughs> it was crazy. Anna's shocked. Backstage, they're shocked. It was like, how? No one gets it. Laurence goes, it's going to go left. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> she went wrong. Nina goes, and this is where I'm like, are they getting information from producers and just creating more drama with their choices in top designs and whatnot? Because Nina goes, this challenge was about standing out and yours stood out to me. And then Lena goes, I think it's very clear that an individual came up with it and that's what we're looking for. Well, okay. <laughs> it's like, they... I'm going to go with, they don't, this is just, this is just their reaction to it. That's what I'm, I, I can't imagine Lena Waithe would be like, yeah, I'll pretend to like a design just for drama. I can't see that happening. Kato's like, bitch, I'm leaving. I am leaving. I am not putting up with this shit. If you can just copy a design that you already did a couple weeks prior, then I'll just keep doing that too. This is bullshit. Bishmi's in a tough spot though, because he you know, has done a season already with Anna, I believe. Regardless, they have a relationship because they're from Project Runway 2.0 and they're all kind of sticking together. And Bishmi's like, I respect that Anna knows the type of designer she is. And so he's like, I got to stay out of this. Thankfully, Karasan, 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 she is another top. And this is when I got to really look at the design and stop focusing on the the cut of the under part because this it's true that she, they say that uh, she showed her costume designer side, but like edited and I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah, she did do that. But then Lena, Lena and Carson have like a cute moment going back and forth, basically saying, I love your work. I love your work. And Elaine is smart. She goes, look at you. You two might be working together sometime soon. And I was like, wait, wait to look out. Way to look out. Lena's like, Lena's like thinking it, but she didn't want to say it. And Elaine's like, I'll say it. You guys should work together. And I would love it, right? Wouldn't we all? The two of them? Yes. Low score is Fabio. My little Picasso. I call him that because I swear the way he dresses makes me feel like that's how Pablo Picasso would dress. I don't know why. He's just everything so oversized and big. It's kind of like a painting. It's like an artiste. I expect him to have one of those, what do they call those, like paint boards 
just with him at all time, you know, like painting. That's how I, that's how Fabio <laughs> looks in my head. But he starts off and I love it. He goes, I'm distraught. I'm a draper and a minimalist. So the draping comments were, it felt like they were directed at me. And Nina and Brandon are like, we promise it was not directed at you. But yet here you are in the bottom. So <laughs> maybe it was. Okay. Nina says she couldn't see the nuance of the design. And I think that's what I was saying. Like if it's, it's all one fabric and color. So it's like, I think I get it. I'm not really sure. Brandon goes, I've seen more experimental things. And Elaine goes, it's not bad. It's a little boring. What the fuck did Christian tell you? What did he tell you? All right, but now it's deliberations time and the designers go backstage and it is on. On. Coteau goes, I'm going to make my African dress for the next challenge because apparently we can repeat looks here. Here's where I'm having an issue because I really do like Coteau and I think she's incredibly talented and I hope she makes it all the way to the end because I would love to see a whole line of hers. But it's not Anna's fault that the designers liked it. You know what I mean? Like it's not her fault that they thought it was cool. So let's not take it out on her necessarily. You know? It's, it, 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 the tension, like, I don't like Anna, but the tension, it just, I felt bad for her because this was a moment she could be celebrating and be like, wow, cool, thanks. Like, I, I got picked. And instead of them being like, wow, good for you, they're just like, okay. Like, everybody. So I, I felt bad for her. Brandon knows that the designers are wondering why Anna is in the top. He says that when they're deliberating. And I thought that was interesting. I thought that was like, why do you know that? Because, because she repeated the same look. So then why is she in the top? You know, I could think of a couple other looks that were better, but whatever. With the results, thank God Anna didn't win. Can you imagine? And she's the first one. They're like, Anna, you're, you're, you're in. And she goes to the back and it's just Kane, Laurence and, and Coteau. And she's like, okay. Like it's, it's sad. I feel really, she's like scared to go in there. Hester is out. That made sense to me in this one. If they, if it was going to be between Anna for repeating a look that looked like I don't know. It, it looked just not fashion to me, but I don't know fashion apparently. Um, then Hester would have been my other choice for multiple reasons. They seem to struggle in every challenge and make up a lot of excuses. And it's, it's just, that's not everyone can do these freaking competition shows. They're crazy. They're insane. They're nuts. But backstage, Kane. He confronts Anna and is like, you made the same dress you made in the unconventional challenge. And Anna's like, I thought I was going home, you guys. Like, I genuinely thought I was leaving. And Coteau's got all her attitude. And because Carson realizes what's been happening while she's on that stage, wait, you know, getting the judge's critiques. And she steps in and says, absolutely not. Okay. We are not bringing any negativity into this space. Okay? And Kato goes, I don't know if you all know this, but this right here is going to divide us. Dun, dun, dun. Very, very good setup for the next episodes and the seasons ahead. They already had an element of divide uh, with the like new generation versus the returning veterans from the original. They already had a little bit of that, but I feel bad for Anna. It's really not her fault. It is not good though, that um, it does appear like the judges are favoring the, the new cast, but it's not Anna's fault that the judges liked her look, even though we are all like, what? Kane took it a little too far. That was like confronting her, like you made the same dress in the unconventional challenge. 
I maybe the next day would have been better. You know what I mean? Like maybe doing it the next day would have been the way to go, but they probably had a little buzz on because they had a bar back there. And so it seemed like the right thing to do. But Kara's son with the queen moment, like absolutely not. We're not adding negativity to this. Kato has a bit of a chip on her shoulder, I want to say. I think Kato has got some leftover resentment from her season. I'm going to go. I think that's the vibe. She's kind of had it since she came in. And it's like, this just took it over the edge, you know? But anyway, I I am not going to be able to get out uh, an Atlanta episode this week because I am going to be going to New York. I'm going to the Roni premiere party. I am so excited. It's going to be a whole girl trip. Me and my friend John and Lauren. Um, I've had both of them on the pod before a while ago. Lauren's been on again more recently. And um, I'm just excited. I never go out of town, travel. I, I've i made it a point to say yes to more shit because it hit me that all I've done for the last decade is work and then stay home and watch TV and be scared of life. And that's not happening anymore. So when I got the invite to go to the Roni premiere, if you don't know, I live in LA, I reached out and was like, hey, are you guys already going? Because they go to everything. And they said, no, but let's make a trip of it. So I leave tomorrow morning early, and then I don't get back until late Thursday night. And Kendrick, my love, who I record Atlanta with, he is super busy because he's got to go back to work tomorrow and has some projects due or something. So he can't do it tonight. And if you can't do it tonight, I can't do it again until Saturday. And at that point, let's just wait till we get both episodes and we'll do this double up next week. So I'm sorry about that, you guys. Um, and I'm sorry again for this being so late. That's it. Message me if you have any questions about scheduling and stuff. I know I've been kind of all over the place. The new pod was great. And I love She Speaks It All. I love having an avenue for uh, different shows besides Bravo. But it's definitely been tricky figuring out scheduling between both. Because I want to give enough love to both pods. But then I'm like, am I covering 12 shows now? <laughs> and so I, I, I had a bit of an identity crisis there for a minute. I also feel like the episodes I've put out on both chan on both pods have just not been my best work. It's hard when you have something new again. And She Speaks It All, my other podcast, is new. And the beginning of stuff's always hard, and I didn't quite know what the identity of the pod was, and I was sort of bringing that here over on She Speaks Bravo, and I just, I just don't think that I've been giving you guys my top-notch stuff. And so it's time to refocus... And I promise I'm going to get um, a little bit better. I've been, I, I, I edit all my episodes, as you probably know, and I'm writing notes down, like stop laughing so much, or st I can tell when I'm nervous. I've had a lot of different guests on, and I get really nervous when I have new guests on, like really, really nervous. So the, the pods are growing and developing, but thank you guys for your support and patience and love and all of those things while I figure out who the fuck I am you know? All right. Love you. Mean it. And I will see you for Orange County. That'll be next. All right. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there's the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.